Bene, bentornati a tutti su Radio Italia 1 dell'Aide. Io sono Simone Berliat e questo è Agri Adventures. Agri Adventures è un programma che si occupa di eh, produzioni di cibo ed agricoltura, ma abbinati a quello che è il turismo e l'ospitalità. Nella puntata di oggi abbiamo l'opportunità di intervistare una persona secondo me molto importante da un punto di vista business ma anche eh, di ehm, quello che è il mondo locale aborigeno che è Daniel Motlop e eh, l'intervista logicamente sarà eh, in inglese perché lui parla inglese e eh, immagino aborigeno e noi non capiamo aborigeno per il momento quindi magari imparo anche qualcosa di nuovo. Mi raccomando, se siete interessati a lasciare un vostro messaggio o commento potete farlo a info at radio 1 delightcomau oppure potete mandare un messaggio attraverso la pagina Facebook di Radio Italia 1 ehm, su Ad, in Adelaide. Ok, now let's switch on English so everybody yep. we can understand and gonna tell what I was saying. So, Um, the, the radio, the Agri Adventures on the Radio Italia Uno dell'Aide is a radio program that speaks about food, agriculture and they are applied to hospitality and tourism. So generally the topics that I like to speak about is connected yep. with agriculture and the communication of food on the, on the radio. And uh, I was saying to our friends who are following us from the Facebook page uh, a little bit about you. So, Daniel uh, Motlop. Motlop? Yep. Is that correct? Motlop. Yep. Motlop, perfect. Sorry, because between how it's spelled and how it's written, there is a lot of difference. But uh, I would like actually to see how it's written in if there is a writing way in, in, a, in Aboriginal. Like, I don't know. Uh, that, that is it. Yeah, is yeah. that correct? M O T L O P. Yep. That's how it's spelled. Oh, that is correct. Yep. This yep. is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Lovely. Perfect. So, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So. And um, so, uh, first, I have to apologize because uh, um, the, la the first newsletter I sent out uh, from the website, uh, from the Agri Adventures uh, website, the booking platform, I, I've been writing th the name of the mail was about. Aboriginal experience, yep. but I spelled it wrong. Okay, no, so, that's all right. Because Aboriginal yep. in Italian, it's read uh, like a. Uh, it's spelled with a with a e. Oh, with an e, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Then I, yeah. I wrote it down, and then I had people calling and say, "Oh my God, you've been spelling it wrong on your <laughs> first." So I apologize. No, I didn't that, know that it's no, it spelled differently here in English. Anyway, so Daniel. I'm super happy because I tell you, I came the first time in Australia yep. in 2009 and uh, I was looking to understand the culture. Yep. But I had a lot of struggle to get in contact with the culture. Yep. That because maybe my mistake, which was I was judging more of what I was seeing. Yep. So uh, I always found guilty because if like as a traveler, I've been traveling all over the planet and I've been visiting different cultures. Yep. And to me, it was the key meet the local, understand yep. more about their story, their experience and everything. So for me today is a sort of, I've done it finally, I can yep. understand a little bit. Teach and you I, a little bit more today. Yes, and I want to open it because yep. I believe that everyone, everybody that's following us uh, on YouTube channel and on the radio and all the other channels of our users, they need to get this connection. Yep. Because it's, it's beautiful, I think. So, uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about your story, yep. like your, yourself? Yeah, so um, my, my country, so with, within Australia, there's obviously 500 different Aboriginal languages. Um, so we call them 500 different um, countries. Um, within my area, it's called Larrakia. Mm -hmm. um, so Larrakia is a small uh, part of the Northern Territory up top of Australia. Okay. Um, and it, it's, it's made up of uh, 16 families. Um, basically, um, within two, 300 kilometers of that, there's another country as well that we call. Mm -hmm. That's um, obviously another certain tribe. So all those tribes around Australia are made up of 500 different languages. Okay. Um, so they're all different. We all speak different. A bit like the Italian culture, I suppose. Oh, yes, um, a little bit, yeah. Calabrese and all that sort of side of thing, I suppose. So, 
Um, it's very, very complex uh, system, um, but basically I'm an Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander man. Mm. Um, Torres Strait Islands uh, from the top of Queensland, uh, of Australia. Okay. Um, a, a bunch of little islands um, where a certain um, people live, so um, called Torres Strait Islands. Uh, my grandfather moved from there when he was very young and moved across to, to Darwin, mm -hmm. um, or Larrakia country, and, and met my grandmother. So basically, that's how I become Larrakia. Um, okay. Torres Strait okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all the way from up there, and I started my journey, um, I suppose, through food and footy, um, uh, Aussie rules, that is. Um, mm -hmm. Not so much football with the soccer, the soccer ball, but um, Aussie rules, we were called in Australia. Um, oh, why did you decide to play like that? Um, I suppose um, as a kid, you know, you, you, your uncles played it and, and all your family. So I, I was 16, done all my schooling in Darwin and got to an age uh, where I wanted to get, move away and, and go to school down here in Adelaide. Okay. Uh, moved away when I was 16 and, and started a professional footy career um, playing, playing in the AFL. I uh, spent 12 years playing professional um, AFL footy. And then after retirement, I started a, a small business um, called Something Wild, mm -hmm. basically selling um, and showcasing native ingredients to Australia. Um, yeah, Australian native ingredients probably haven't been showcased and obviously the European um, influence through Australia, you know, with your farms and that sort of stuff and, you know, growing potatoes, growing carrots and all of this, this thing um, has probably t taken over what, um, you know, Aboriginal people used to farm a mm -hmm. long time ago. Okay. So basically, with something wild, we try to um, put fresh um, fruits and berries and nuts and greens um, that are native to Australia um, in our central market store mm -hmm. and, and sell it that way. Okay. So, well, first thing I say that, like, in my opinion, being professional in hospitality and uh, being also Italian, I always found a strong connection between what is food and what is culture. Mm -hmm. And one of the strong things that I've seen in exchange in consideration of food it was that food helps to open cultures. Yep. Because like Italian culture now sometimes is obviously uh, reinvented all over the planet, but there is a strong connection with food. And because of that, you can find it, the, the Italian culture all over the planet, yep. even though maybe it's not made from Italians. Yep. Yep. So the, the fact that you've been connecting and creating this opportunity from not uh, Aboriginal people to taste uh, and experience your product, I believe is a way to open the cultures. Yep. Because uh, um, until, as I said, you judge by the eyes, you maybe can be uh, shocked or surprised from the look of things. Mm -hmm. But when you use your palate, yep. things are changing. Yeah. There is not a looking anymore, it's just something different. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, but basically, um, our, our food is part of our culture as well. Um, as you said, um, you know, there, there's things that I can't eat that, that are culturally significant to us, um, which is the crocodile. Mm -hmm. um, crocodile is, is a god to us, I suppose, or to my people, mm -hmm. where I'm from. So we basically don't eat crocodile. Okay. But there's other things that we can eat. So um, there's other tribes that can't eat a stingray or can't eat um, a certain fish or, or things like that. And that's basically basically around sustainab sustainability stuff as well. Mm -hmm. okay. um, if everyone eats one thing, then obviously you're going to um, put a bit of stress on the, on the land and, and that sort of oh, stuff yeah, too. Oh, yeah, of course, so, of course. So, Everything, basically in, in our culture, um, there, there's a system that we go by which is called the moiety system. It, it's a Latin, Latin word for half. Okay. Um, so everything you walk through, the land, um, the stars, the skies, the sun, um, to people, to the animals, is either one or the other. Yiricha or dua, we call it. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a circle split in half and you're separated between, so eight clans will be Yiricha clans, mm -hmm. and eight clans will be Dua clans. And that, that tells you who you can marry into as well. So Yiricha people have to marry Dua people, and Dua have to marry Yiricha. Okay, um, that's interesting. And it's the same so with all the plants. So um, a pandanus tree, you know, a Yiricha tree, um, a paperbark tree, Dua, an animal, a uh, crocodile, Yiricha. Uh, uh -huh. And then, yeah, so, so, on, so like everything is either Yiricha or Dua. And so that decides on where we are as family, kinship, 
law and everything, Aboriginal law. Sorry. Aboriginal law. So just to understand, this it was uh, so it was created between the different Aboriginal country. Is that correct? This is uh, yeah, sixty oh, thousand years old. So it's something yeah, that culture. came through the the, the generations it's and been the generations down through song, and through dance. So we basically Aboriginal people didn't write or anything like yeah, that. They absolutely. dance. So they dance these stories that and it's much easier to pass a dance on than it is to learn how to write. Or oh read. yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, our, all our histories on walls or rock art um, and in our song lines, which is a dance and stuff like that. So. Okay, so is um, like I was trying to, to, to get and elaborate the concept because uh, obviously for us it, it's, it's a bit different, but it has sense if you see it from a different point of view, which is that people have been learning on the time of living that you are from this specific spot yep. and you don't do uh, these things because these things will damage you. Or yep. damage the place where you live. The culture, yeah, that basically. Yeah. And that is going to be the culture because yep. the reality, if I understand well, Aboriginal, they also can, their culture is also their country. Yep. So the culture is where you are, which means the environment, which is, is yep. also culture. Is that correct? Yep. yep. Okay. We come, we come third. People come third. Come third. Yep. Yeah. Well, that is has yep. a lot of sense. Absolutely. After the animals and after the country, and then Absol it's people. Perfect. So, but that is this yeah. is a beautiful sentence. And uh, the, um, because like one of the other interviews that I've done, it was uh, with uh, um, uh, Ben Paxton, which is a wine, has a winery yep. um, in uh, McLaren Vale, and they work uh, in biodynamic, biodynamic regime. And biodynamic was uh, created as philosophy from uh, Rudolf Steiner, who uh, was an anthropo anthroposophist um, from uh, Austria, yep. that has uh, uh, done and created this sort of uh, lifestyle, which is not just considering what you want to eat now, but is also the relationship within the stars, between the energy, how yep. the energy move on the environment, yep. and um, and that was not coming from just him. He was just collecting the information they were coming from the old generations of farmers back yep. in Europe. Yep. So like there is a concept of having the horn and the filling horn with some specific ingredients leaving the horn aging yep. under the ground. Yep. So it's so interesting because you've been speaking of something that has a connection in my opinion all over on the planet. I yep. think they even the, the Indian from uh, America, yep. they had similar concepts yep. which so it, it's really cool and uh, these are all uh, like uh, biodynamic it was something in my mom in Bulgaria uh, now she's in Bulgaria but biodynamic was um, for her uh, a way to be respectful for the planet so yep. when she was growing food she was trying to make this connection stars and yep. and um, so I'm around this thing for like 35 years. Yep. And uh, now that with the problems that we are seeing coming with the environment and sustainability, yep. they, this kind of uh, agriculture way, they are getting kind of relevant yep. because we can't keep going using you know agrochemicals and deforestation and just spread down, put seeds, yep. put some chemicals and yep. go because that's that's why these these native ingredients that we harvest, um, you know, it does, you don't need to water them. Um, you don't need to set up sprinklers systems. You don't have to, you know, put fertilizer down. None of this stuff, all the stuff that we sell in our shop is, it's, it's organic, I suppose, so, and wild harvested. So, yeah, it's probably the, it is the way a lot more people are going. And even with the food that we sell in our shop, you know, your, your, your emu, your kangaroo, mm -hmm. uh, your buffalo, your wild boar, um, those those are things that have been, you know, the, the wild boar and buffalo um, the, and camel mm -hmm. have been introduced to Australia. Oh yeah, of course. And they're running wild out there in, in, through the central desert, um, up through the Northern Territory, um, and they're a pest. So um, to be able to eat more of that for sustainability and, you know, not eat your cattle stuff, all the stuff that gets farmed and that. So um, we are finding a bit more of a trend, I suppose, in our shop where people are actually going down that line of, we want to become more sustainable. Mm -hmm, and absolutely. That's as far as you know, using plastic bags as well and uh, paper bags. People bringing their own 
um, lunch boxes in to put the meat in rather than um, using plastic bags. So, yeah, we're, I, think I assume that that is more the future. Yes, yeah, we we hope so. So yeah, um, sorry, I have to introduce someone that uh, today is helping us. Come on, come over here. <laughs> I've been checking the camera. He was checking the camera for us, and it's you can say fun. hi to everyone. I'm gonna see you. My son Francis has been helping today a little bit. Can you please go back now and check if the camera is running? Because <laughs> if it's not running, I'm ruined. <laughs> okay, and um, so the well, there's so many things that uh, that I've seen connecting um, between the project I'm developing over here and what you are doing. That's why when uh, you agreed to create this uh, sensory masterclass. Yep. about your product, you actually came out with the answer of a question that I had, which is, how do I use that? Yep. I mean, I'm so curious, I, they are there, I know that they are here, they haven't been imported, so they won't create any harm to the environment. Mm -hmm. Simply, I don't know how to use them. And uh, I have, fortunately to me, I'm a kind of open mind with food, so yep. wherever I, I went, I tried. Yep. But sometimes I know the people, they are a little bit you know, skeptic. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. you said, I want to do this experience, this masterclass, I said, oh my God, I want to have him on the platform. Yep. Yep. So, and do you, can you give us a little bit of, you know, uh, if, the, what will be done during this masterclass? Do we have yep. to dance or do we have to do something? No, like no, no dancing. Um, basically, there'll be um, a number of... Uh, native ingredients, um, some that a lot of people have seen before, you know, there, there's stuff that people have have seen, but then there's stuff that people haven't. So um, we'll put a number of native ingredients on the table and, and pretty much uh, show them on a map where they are from, where they can be harvested, um, mm -hmm. what area, where you can find them, um, around which certain plants. Um, but also we'll, we'll teach people how to cook with them. Um, a lot of them are, um, sour in taste I suppose the plums mm -hmm. and the berries and that sort of stuff but if you can imagine an Aboriginal person's pa palate a um, hundred years ago it would have been a sweet plum sort of thing so um, basically what we try to do at Something Wild is put these native ingredients in commercial products like um, if you've seen recently we've done our yogurt um, mm -hmm. uh, so yogurt we've done with Fluoro Milk, um, the Fluoro Milk Company just to obviously create jobs so basically if I, if I put a native ingredient um, in a commercial product, um, it can provide jobs back in the Aboriginal community where they harvest a lot of that stuff. Absolutely. Um, so the, the Kakadu plum comes out of Water, which is a thousand kilometres out of Darwin. Um, so we collect that uh, out of there um, through the ladies. And then also, we also do a green ant gin. Um, yes. Which is a very nice drop. So I actually had the opportunity yeah. I interviewed yep. uh, Sasha Laforge. Oh, yeah, one yeah, of yep, the first yep. interviews where they do, I do with the radio yep. Italia Uno. Yeah, he's an Italian boy too, so yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically trying to make native ingredients, put it on the map, I suppose, is, you know, if, if I can put it in a uh, already, um, someone's already, you know, doing a yogurt or stuff like that, it, it, people are going to try it more and then you know, kids are going to try it and stuff like that. So, yeah, slowly, slowly, people are getting to know it. But, yeah, basically, we'll put a lot of native ingredients out and we'll talk about it, um, the cultural significance to it, who mm -hmm. can pick it, who can't, who can't, through that system. Um, okay. Could it be, yeah. sorry, just like add an idea, would it be a little bit scary, the fact that those ingredients, they became commercial to the point that people are starting to do no respect the, the balance that you were speaking yep. before, just because they want to make it more. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's where um, I suppose that's where I'm tied between um, you know culture and business. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's it's hard to get right. Basically, as a company, um, we go to the traditional owners of that land where it's harvested, and we ask um, if it can be harvested out of that area, mm -hmm. because obviously they're going to look after their trees and that land to the best as they can. Mm -hmm. um, rather than me send someone in there and go and collect it and they you know they rip trees down or whatever so absolutely basically we the onus is, is on the people that need to look after the land and aboriginal people will look after the, their land or where they're harvesting from um, so yeah and the other the other key factor in our business is we go to government as well for a permit to be able to harvest in certain areas okay um, so 
basically um, whether it's you know down the beach or on the side of the road or anything like that we go to the government and say look we want a permit for this area because that's where it grows and we want to be able to harvest it um, because we don't want in five ten years everyone out doing it um, we want everyone to have to have a permit to be able to pick harvest native ingredients from Australia um, want to move directly like you know you want to create legislation to, yes. to manage these before yep. that is going to be something dangerous for the environment yep. Yep. which is probably a good thing to do yeah. at least yep. Australia for what I've seen so far they create yep. a good legislation and, and, uh, and that is really good really good thing and uh, I was thinking that do you think it will be possible to have the experience to go and do an harvest because that is yep. something you really would like to do yeah yeah of course yeah it's it's obviously um, every now and again we take chefs up to Darwin um, mm -hmm. and we go harvesting for magpie goose. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, sorry, what is, you have to give us a little bit of understanding yeah. what are these products because okay. so first you pronounce it really quick, the name, yeah. Yeah. and for me it's like, Whoa, what was that? I haven't yeah. seen it before. I need to have a picture somewhere. Yeah, so basically um, we call it gurumachi, which it's, it's, a, it's a goose, mm -hmm. um, but it's a black and white goose. Okay. And it's native to Australia. Um, and it's all through the Northern Territory, up through Queensland. Um, so basically, I've been yeah, hunting magpie goose most of my life with my, with my family. Hunting with rifle or? Uh, yeah, with rifle, yeah, okay. yep, yep, yep. So mainly when we <laughs> use a spear, nah, nah. nah <laughs> Not nah, anymore nah. with the... Nah, with when the... we use a spear, it's usually with fish, so <laughs> oh, fishing, okay. it's fishing side, so. But um, yeah, magpie goose obviously is um, a very big uh, food source for Aboriginal mm -hmm. people, um, mainly during uh, October period to February. Okay. Um, basically, there's a system on when you harvest it, so it's not just a matter of going out and um, getting the magpie goose all year round. Um, they they pretty much tell you when they're ready to be harvested, mm -hmm. um, and that's when they're nice and juicy and fat and ready to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so they go out during June, July, August. They go out and sit nest. So basically, they're reproducing, um, which means we're no, not allowed to not touch, obviously. touching them, absolutely, um, and they don't taste as good. They taste good when they come back around. So after, so yeah, so there is a system in everything that Aboriginal people do, I suppose, um, and that's saying when you can harvest stuff um, and when you can't, um, for the only reason is sustainability mm -hmm. and and treating everything with respect, I suppose. So, mm -hmm. and also the. Like the, the, the experience, it becomes more um, a sort of spiritual experience to, to do that and then you give this value to a product, it is not connected yep. with the value of money, it is connected with the, with the experience, which actually is why I'm so focused on trying to bring experiences, yep. Yep. because like uh, my mother in Bulgaria, the way how she's doing uh, uh, agriculture, how she's growing animals, like she collect uh, animals from um, a market yep. uh, 12 years ago yep. and uh, she uh, wanted to have this animal growing healthy but more uh, the, the animals they were growing and they were dying really quickly yep. because she was not giving any antibiotics and yeah, she, yep, yep. she was just simply leaving them where they were having to be and the animals yeah. they were dying yeah. and we were worried because obviously you know the first year we had 80 percent of loss yeah. on, uh, and you think an animal should be able to stand on its own right yeah, yeah. and they were not and uh, so we had to contact different you know uh, aviary centers like in italy where they can tell you what can be the problem and from that we had the answer was that these those animals they were not designed to be grown in a normal state. Yeah. So they were designed to be grown in a factory or on a farm, but it's designed to be factory. So that was the point when which we got super scared because we thought if this, like let's say that we can't be able to access a farm for the next 10 years, yeah. these animals, they're all gone. Yeah. So, we, yeah. so, and then he talked to my mom like uh, eight years time, to clear these animals yep. from their mistakes in, in, the, in, the, in the DNA. Yep. And now they are healthy, we yep. have 90% of them. And I you say, you understand when they are ready 
Yep. Often they are not. So it yeah, also yeah. became a sort of respect with yep. the animal. When you when you approach the animal, you understand if it's the moment. Sometimes you think, you know, it's not the moment for this animal, yep. and you don't want to go on. And um, well, a lot of through our culture, a lot of there's a lot of signs, including flowers um, that pop up that tell you when turtle eggs are ready um, or when turtles can be harvested. Mm -hmm. So there's there's certain little things that the environment show our Aboriginal people on when they can do something, pretty much so. So you speak with the land and the land tells you yeah. when you have to move. Yep. Which is actually uh, another thing that I, um, like I had the opportunity to, 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 to visit uh, Uluru yep. um, in 2009. And uh, when I went over there, the first thing I found it uh, a magic place. Mm -hmm. And maybe because the soil, maybe because you have the big rock in the middle and then you have around this. But also it was full of small little spots around it, yep. which were making it magic. Yep. Like, and I remember that, uh, I don't know if you, if, I don't know if it's still possible to climb it or not. Ah, uh, not anymore, no. That's good. No, yep. Because when I went over there, I realized that why you have to go on the top of it when the beauty of it, it's yeah. around it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and then yeah. you, can, you can understand a lot about the, 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 how the culture has been developing here. Because when I was over there, I had in front this big rock. And then I turned myself and I've seen the red soil, the green line, yep. and the blue sky. Yep. Where do you have to go? I mean, it's not like as European that you have the peak of a mountain over there. So you're constantly fighting to get on the top and going on down. Yeah. Over there, there is no point to rush around. No, no. It's all there. So yep. you go in one direction, you find what you have to do on the way, and that is the life. Yep. Yeah, it is, it's, a, it's a beautiful sacred place, and it's, it's very sacred to Aboriginal people of that area as well. So to, to finally have stopped them They've won their fight to stop people from climbing it. Um, I think, yeah, there's a lot of very happy people through that area. I yeah, suppose, so. finally, yes. and I don't know. And like seeing the rock, and I thought, I understood why it was so important. Yep. The only place you can see in, you know, 100 kilometers. Yep. Yep. And then when you get over there in the morning, you have the water, the condensation coming yep. down from the rock. So the, yep. the rocks is life, yeah. is yep. mother. Yep. So I was so I was so happy about the visit I've done, but also all the countryside. Like to me, Australia is amazing because the countryside. Yeah, and there's uh, a, the other big rock on the other side as well of it. As well yeah, I think I've seen so, it when I was yeah. driving up. Yep. But I never been visiting. Yeah. It would be something that. So that those two pieces. So if you talk about the Yiricha thing that I spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. in that country, that's the opposite to. Them. Could you please, so. uh, like. Uh, do you have a, um, the way of define uh, Irichi and Dua and Dua in English? Yin and Yang. Yin and Yang. Okay, we made it easy. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yin so yeah. now I can connect it, yeah. and now we can keep yes. speaking about that. Love it. Absolutely. So it's a it's a good philosophy. Well, what could we do to the people that's following us? Because so far we've been having a good chat. Um, what do you, what, where would you like to go? Like, what do you think is the goal? That what your your mission? I suppose, I suppose, just to showcase Aboriginal culture and what it is. It's such a beautiful culture, um, but it's been, I suppose, through past governments and and settlement and all that sort of stuff it's probably been hidden a bit mm -hmm. um, but, yes it is you know and I mean we got a beautiful culture where we're from um, but it just probably some doesn't get showcased enough about mm -hmm. how beautiful it is so I got a chance as a businessman to be able to um, showcase you know native ingredients and and put it on the map I suppose and um, that's that's probably my vision just to get it all out there I suppose and make it the norm so so uh, for people that's coming in a central market actually in Adelaide where the shop is located yep. and um, they will have opportunity to access obviously the uh, Aboriginal ingredients of yep. food yep. and then maybe do the experience too. Yep. Uh, do they also We've got a have... bar as well that where we do uh, native cocktails as well. Oh, okay, um, perfect. So we sell our green ant gin there. Um, so we, yeah, we'll look to make a, um, a lot more different alcohol brands as well mm -hmm. um, 
So things like um, aperitifs and that, and you know, a little bit of Italian, Campari stuff, you know. So, um, but use native ingredients to to copy those things as well. So that's basically where where um, you know the native ingredients are going. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah. And is there a chance for people coming also to connect in other ways to the shop? Like the shop could be the gate of the culture. Like over there, you could say there is what's happening. Ah, oh, it's the printer that is speaking. Uh, the 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 um, the um, uh, swap. People going to the shop, they can uh, maybe find a way to you know find Aboriginal festival. Yeah. Or uh, so like, are you gonna? Th- are you thinking to do this kind of also like connect the Aboriginal culture? Like you have music events or things um, like that. Oh, we we do um, we do dinners every now and again and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Basically, we yeah we're just a shop of you know native game, native green. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, sell all those products, but then also sell you know your herbal teas, native mm-hmm. teas, um, but also native the the green side that are harvested fresh every day. Mm-hmm. So we try to be like a normal fruit and veg, and yeah. and have normal um, native greens in in there as well. So just to put it put it on the map a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically your your chance to come into the market and and try some native ingredients and absolutely um, then maybe head to um somewhere and try try some food or something like that so that has native ingredients in it so yeah okay so i think that um i'm really curious to come again like uh, we're going to probably organize the first uh, or the second um uh, experience yep. and, uh, with the Agri Adventures Meetup Group yep. over there, so we can come and have a look and experience and uh, obviously more about the, the, the experience itself. In the meantime, I really uh, thank you to come uh, over. Thank you for having me. Sharing so. and um, I will see you again. And so thank you very much for who have been following us on the YouTube channel and uh, you'll find uh, uh, the information about uh, the website because they buy you also, you're also having a website so people yep. will be able to buy some of the products yep. online. Something Wild Australia, yep, okay. www.somethingwildaustralia. Perfect, so you can find the link below or you can see you know, the subtitles and uh, you can see the Adventures on Ag Adventures yep. which is agadventures.com.au uh, and um, if you're coming in Australia soon, just come and yep. see Daniel. Yep. or we'll the down to the Adelaide Central Markets and we'll be down there. And uh, thank you very much for following us. And uh, for the people that's following us from the Radio Italiano Adelaide, I can switch back to the Italian. Yep, yep. <laughs> so we can... So, uh, vi ringrazio per averci seguito in questa la, la puntata di oggi. E penso che sia stata una puntata molto interessante. Eh, che può darci la, l'opportunità di entrare in contatto con una cultura che abbiamo visto e conosciuto nell'ultimo periodo, nell'ultimo periodo di tempo ma non abbiamo mai avuto l'opportunità di, eh, di, di conoscere quindi veniteci a, veniteci a trovare al Central Market venite a trovare Deni al Central Market e eh, grazie ancora uh, se volete contattarci ripeto info at radio 1 delaide.com.au oppure la pagina facebook di Radio Italia 1 grazie e buona giornata thank you do you want to come to say thank you too? thank you <laughs> ciao ciao yeah ciao <laughs> yeah. like you speak Italian he doesn't speak yeah. Italian my well, three kids do oh do they? yeah a little huh? bit a little bit well that's good That will be fun, organize something together. Okay, done.